Jesus fucking Christ. Hello and welcome back to the House of the Stack podcast. It's time to discuss the new official trailer for House of the Dragon. Also, before we do this, thank you guys so much for 1000 subs. We finally reached it. I would love to do a Q&A with you guys. Put your questions down in the comment section below. I'll pick the best ones and answer them in an upcoming video. But anyway, George, I had a lot to say about the trailer in our breakdown. What did you think about it? <laughs> Dude, I loved it. I loved it. It was awesome. They, they really captured the vibes and, uh, you know, the, the, the focus on the people. It's just nice to see small council meetings. Oh, yeah. Know? It's like my favorite part of the whole show. Like oh, yeah. Small council meetings, you know, because back in the day, you always look forward to um, like Varys and Littlefinger just j just poking at each other. And mm. now we're going to have Otto Hightower being, you know, proto Tywin, which Fuck is yeah. pretty cool. Fuck yeah, yeah. especially with Damon. By the way, is it is it Damon, Damon or Damon? I keep saying Damon and I feel like I'm about to set myself up for... A lot of hate comments if I keep saying it. It like doesn't that. really matter. It's like <laughs> George R. R. Martin doesn't even know how to pronounce things, right? Oh, bro. What, what's the thing he likes saying? Stanis. <laughs> he, no, nah, for real. Stanis. He, he calls him Stanis. Yeah, and and... There's a bunch of other weird ones, too. I, I forgot what it was. The Frakai. But uh, yeah. He also says the Frakai. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Like, bro, you're the creator. Get it right. <laughs> In the trailer, Corliss said Damon Targaryen. Did he? Damon. Like Matt Damon. Yeah, like Matt Damon. Mm. I guess yeah. I kept calling him Damon because of Maester Aemon, you know? It's just a D. I say Aemon. Aemon, yeah. brother. Yeah, Aemon. Aemon. Aemon sounds like a Pokemon. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, but let's get back to the trailer. What I really, really liked about it was that they really tried to establish relationships. They, they already show it. Like, all of the little scenes we have of, obviously, Alicent and Rhaenyra, we're gonna spend a lot of time on that, and all of the characters surrounding Viserys. Then later on, we have a few shots of Aemon and Kristen Cole. They, they do make you think the fight is between Rhaenyra and, and Daemon, no? Yeah. Yeah. Which, there's gonna be a bit of drama. Not, not, mm -hmm. not as much as with Alicent, obviously, but... There's definitely going to be some drama. I mean, the guy just straight up left and uh, crowned himself the king of the Stepstones. And Dude, the initially, I, I thought when he walked in, I initially thought that might be like uh, Aegon. And then I realized, oh, he already has a crown on. That must be like the Stepstone thing. Because I couldn't see his face clearly in that scene. And then he gets stopped by... Um, That's Sir Harold Westerling. Harold hey. Westerling. Right? Yeah, guy who was in The Hobbit. Plays him. Graham McTavish, also in The Witcher. Yeah. Great actor. I think they will likely expand his role as well. Like, he doesn't really live all that long. But I think right. he might he might be around for a couple of seasons. By the way, guys, if you are here for spoiler-free stuff, this is likely going to be a podcast episode full of spoilers. So if you don't want to know anything, you might want to check out a different video. I kept thinking about Harwin Strong. Um, he's gonna be played by Ryan Core. I don't think no, we've seen him yet. I don't think so. Rhaenyra is gonna have so many suitors, man. It's the same with Damon. Like that guy just yeah. fucks whatever, whatever's moving. Um, <laughs> do you think they're gonna bring in nettles? Eventually, yeah. Eventually, they yeah. kind of have to because it they left it ambiguous. Yeah, definitely not first season. This, which is the thing, they they were talking about either three or four seasons, and I really, really like that. Three seasons would be perfect, I think, and four are also okay. Well, it takes a minute. There's a lot of stuff that happened. Dude, yeah. I won't, I won't be able to see, like, Battle Above Gods die until I turn 30. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I appreciated after watching Kenobi was that they used real sets. They were in real locations. And it just shows, in my opinion. Not that big of a fan of that whole new technology. Because sometimes you can really tell that this is all fake. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's a different kind of uh, kind of green screen now where, where the screen, they actually project what they want you to see on the screen. Yeah. So it's like an actual screen. I think they use it in the Batman and it comes out a lot better than like normal green screen. Th that's exactly what I meant. They used it in House of the Dragon as well for the dragon shots. But I really yeah. appreciate that when they're filming an actual battle, that it is on a real beach, like they're um, going to yeah. Morocco or whatever, and they're really filming on a beach. But yeah, in terms of like what we've seen in the trailer, what yeah. do you think about the dragons? I um, really, really like that they're more book accurate now, like they have longer necks and... I really like the color. Yeah, I think the Karaxis. color is the, the nice thing about it. Yeah, I think the color is really good. You, you can't really tell the difference. I was too excited. I, I, I said that it, uh, that it made Drogon look like a Netflix adaptation, but in hindsight, that's just not true, man. Because <laughs> I saw pictures. Because some people were actually mad and they went like, oh my God, CGI looks so goddamn bad. And look at Drogon, what are they doing? And... They compared it and I was like, ah, oh, okay, well, season eight Drogon is still better than season one Karaxis. But, you know, it's it's harder when you have 17 to 20 dragons roaming around. Like, you can't just, you can't just spend everything on one dragon. But yeah, did you see the armor of Daemon? I'm, I'm, uh, I, I can't wait for, for this. Which one? Journey. He has like four outfits. Yeah, which is cool, right? Because he, he's got the gold cloaks versus like uh step stones and then um his targaryen armor and then his tourney fighting kristen cole armor i think i think they're basically the same armor that he probably just changes the helmet a lot could be could be yeah i really yeah. like it the, the attention to detail with, with the rubies on his chest and oh it's yeah it's kind of like the it's kind of like the artworks that we've seen in the calendars for a song of ice and fire well his gold cloaks looks better than janos slint <laughs> i will not have it <laughs> dude janos had no drip zero <laughs> drip drip or Although drown I, baby uh, I, I i liked it too but this one's more accurate i mean they literally have the gold cloak so i think he has like a gold helmet yeah they were basically a wish.com version of the king's guard armor of the yeah. golden one um, but it still looked cool, you know, um, not that bad. Dude, when they were like pad the gold close uh, pounding their chest, I got very hyped in that scene. <laughs> still don't know what, what it could be, but probably just some mission. Raiding peasants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's pretty successful in doing that. The yeah. legendary commander of the gold cloaks. I mean, he basically invented them. That's where yeah. the name originated was, was him giving them gold cloaks. So yeah, gonna be, gonna be awesome to see it to see that also they finally showed more of Kristen cole the first two teasers had me thinking that he wasn't gonna be as much in season one as i thought he's going to be but now that we've seen a lot of him before the tourney during the tourney i think he's gonna play a pretty big role in season one as well yeah because um i think they're gonna emphasize like his friendship or you know relationship with Rhaenyra. What do you think happened? What do you think what happened? With Rhaenyra and Kristen. You know, they could hook up. I think she ditched his ass. <laughs> yeah, she she did. Because he he wants to like um sail away with her, right? And she's like, yo, I no, I don't <laughs> like food in Nassos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they're they're gonna like make them really close so you know when he finally sides with whoever it's gonna it's gonna hurt more yeah and that's yeah. where allison comes in as well they try so hard to make allison likable like that actress like Bro. the way she acts is so likable i'm like you're too, trying really hard to make her likable that allison actress is probably what catlin should have looked like olivia Cook and, is and also so the way beautiful. and also like when Allison and, and Rhaenyra are, are sitting at that dinner table, you know, it's the same scene with Cersei and Catelyn in season one. True. <laughs> Talking about non-canon sons and daughters. <laughs> <laughs> non-canon sons and daughters. Yeah, because if you remember, Cersei talked about a son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He should try to have a son with Robert. Ye old Bobber Baratheon. Good times. Bobby B. Bobby B. Go back to Winterfell. Flee, you fool. Better times, man. Better times. Better times. Simpler <laughs> times when uh, HBO had no money. Dude, had yeah. to focus on writing. Mm. 
Dude, but I think the writing is really strong. Like all the dialogues in 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 the trailer, it's like very George R. R. Martin esque. Because you can notice in the first half of Game of Thrones versus second half, they they really modernize some language there, which I thought it was annoying. But um, here they they try to bring back that 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 fake you know early Shakespearean talk, yeah. which I really dig. Yeah, every bit of news that comes out lately is. Is just very promising. I mean, they've worked on the show for many years and they have an incredibly talented writing team, people who are really experienced and who worked on lots of other shows. There's even George R. R. Martin's own writing assistant in the official writing board of HBO for the show. So they need to they need to add a lot of mayhaps, a lot mm. of uh mummers farce. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean Miguel Sapochnik is obviously going to be the guy for everything, stunts for everything visually, and then we have Ryan Condal who's going to come in and be the fanboy. Um, yeah, with the lore. Dude, I'm just glad they they kept in characters that, you know, like they would have cut if it were in like Game of Thrones. Oh, there was some. There was a li really funny tidbit in the latest Entertainment Weekly article. They wanted to rename someone similar to the way they did Asha and Yara. They already like got rid of a generation between Aemon and uh, the Mad King. They're deleting even more Targaryens. I'm going to write it. Dude, I, I, I don't care about Corlys being black, but if you take out another generation of Targaryen, I'm going to lose it. Originally, they wanted to change some names. For instance, Rhaenyra and Rhaenys for the casual audience. That was that was the I'm idea. I'm glad of they stuck through. Oh my god, bro! That was the I'll idea of Sapochnik and uh, Condal, which just straight up went, "We can't." <laughs> Done. <laughs> which uh, it was so suggested by Sapochnik. Yeah, yeah. They they really need to like trust their audience more. Like the whole point that Game of Thrones succeeded was like, they trusted their audience, you know? Like season one had a lot of characters. Back then I got confused sometimes, but you get used to it. Definitely, definitely. And I, I yeah. appreciated the way these plots were told. Like you didn't have characters telling exactly what happened at each and every yeah. moment. I guess they, they did take uh, change Sweet Robin to not confuse with Robert Baratheon. I mean, stuff like that doesn't bother me. But in this case, man, I'm, yeah. I'm glad. If it's, a, if it's someone like Sweet Robin, like I get it. But like Targaryen has a canon. Please stop changing more. <laughs> and, they, and they made Aegon Jon Snow, which I don't think will happen in the books, at least in terms of the name. I don't see him being another Aegon. I mean, why would Rhaegar name two of his sons, Aegon. Right. Could be um, like, what, Jid Harris or Aemon? I, I'd really like Jid Harris, but... Yeah? Uh, yeah. Aemon would be cool. I thought oh, Aemon. Aemon would be amazing. Because you, you can name him after Aemon the Dragon Knight, and then it's gonna flip right back to Maester Aemon. I thought it would be pretty cool. Or he comes back as his true Chad version, just go around killing people, then you can name him Mago. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Rhaegar is like... You know, he was a most underrated Targaryen, Magor the Cruel. <laughs> That'd be hilarious, especially <laughs> when you consider like Cersei's nickname to be Magor with teats. Hilarious, <laughs> man! I, I'm glad. Oh my god, not changing the name. Great move, definitely. But yeah, I'm I'm hyped. It's literally one month away, and we're gonna be all over it, man. I I liked what I was seeing, or. Everything I saw so far. There was not one moment where I was like, eh. Do you think this show will be as successful as, let's say, season six Game of Thrones? I think it will still start out pretty strong. So let's see if they can hold it. Yeah, because... Kind of like, you know, Better Call Saul, like, premieres with, like, the highest rating. And then it dips down to, like, a million or something. The people who hate season eight are going to be super loud. But I do think a lot of people are still going to be interested. It's freaking tits and dragons, man. Although there's not going to be as much tits in this one. As many tits. I think they toned it down a little. No! <laughs> I, I like a little finger explaining the plot while two chicks going at it. They're going to take that away from me. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. They're going to do it. Because he is so much better. <laughs> Play with our arse. <laughs> Play with our arse. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dude, if, even if they uh, Lord, minimize the nudity. The realm is the thousand blades of Aegon, and also the 16 teats of my girls in my brothel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the realm is <laughs> George do you, you know, know what, what the realm is George do you know what the fucking realm is It's me <laughs> I am confused <laughs> uh, uh, Why do you think I came all this way <laughs> Fuck off <laughs> If I were in charge of this show You know I, I'll obviously Keep all the lore pretty consistent But I will just sprinkle my uh the worst lines in game of thrones in there just as easter eggs <laughs> like 20 good men and all that stuff my plot will be good but there will be your references yeah. bro you know what i would do yeah. um i would have damon and misaria going through the brothel and they're just hanging yeah. out going walking around and then one girl will approach damon and she's like ah i see you're with a girl you want a good girl but you need the bad pussy Damn, and then all the casuals are going to be like, I know that, I know that, it's from Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's my favorite line. Well, I, that's what I mean. Like, they, um, you know, if they were lazy, they could have just gotten rid of Masaria and replace her with someone else. Or, you yeah. know, combine it into one of the small council members. But but they can, kept it in. I just like that they, they keep in the characters instead Dude, of replacing them. We actually yeah. know that Daemon will have four different girlfriends or wives this season they kept everyone Damn. in there they could have easily gotten rid of Rhea rose but they're still going for that but yeah we will we will see how it turns out man i mean it's not we'll see aemon losing his eye definitely we've seen everything about that whole alicent uh, rushing at rhaenyra scene yeah aemon's like looky here a bunch of strongs <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Is there gonna be uh one Kristen Cole or two? Just the one. Just Fabian Frank. Oh, just the one? Yeah. Yeah, I was looking around. I was like, the scene where he fights Aemon, he looks a lot older. They probably do a lot in the makeup or whatever. I mean they kind of have to. It's 20 years, so Yeah. Uh we haven't talked about the crab guy. Oh, Craig Estrahar. Yeah. <laughs> the man with the funny That's name. gonna be fun. I'm Craig Estrahar. Mr. Crab Man. It's gonna be Damon's big final Elden Ring boss this season. But yeah, all in all, I think that trailer did everything it needed to do. Obviously, you had your typical dragon hype shots, you had the action. But I also appreciate that they showed way more dialogue in this. Yeah, costumes look great, the music is out of this world, can't wait for Ramin Jawadi's soundtrack. Yeah, I'm hyped, I'm ready to give this one a chance. What do you think about it, George? I thought it looks really good music is good and the dialogues I, I think they pay attention to uh martin's writing style so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this one once again make sure to put your questions down in the comment section below i'll pick the best ones and answer them in an upcoming video thank you guys for watching take care and see us later